Today on Hands On Photography, I am sitting down with a Canon Explorer of Light, the one and only Mr. Terrell Lloyd. And boy, we not only are we going to talk about some sports photography, but we're going to get into some of the ins and outs of just being a photographer in general and not really pigeonholing yourself into one aspect of photography. And his career is just it speaks for itself. And it's all because he was willing to learn a lot of different things about photography. Hey, you don't want to miss this. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Hover. Whether you're a developer, photographer, or small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Go to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable, as always, coming to you each and every Thursday here on the network, where I like to share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. And as you've been loyal listeners and viewers, you know, every now and then I get amazing opportunities to hang out with some just flat out ridiculous ridiculously good photographers here in this industry and this is one of those weeks but before we do that before we get into that allow me a second to say welcome to all of our brand new listeners and viewers welcome to you thank you for taking the time to find the show thank you for taking the time to go on ahead and, and just subscribing in whatever podcast app that you're enjoying us on because we're available on on all of them. If you go to the website, twit.tv slash hop, that's twit.tv slash H O P for hands on photography, you'll see that we're available on Apple Podcasts. We're available on uh, Spotify, even have a YouTube channel. You know what's funny though? I look at my analytics and most of you folks listen to the show more so than you watch the show. And this is a photography show, so I don't get that, but. That's neither here nor there. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you liking and sharing and doing all the ratings and stuff to help other people discover hands on photography. So now with that out of the way, I don't want to take up much of your time with my mumbo jumbo. Let's get our guest, the one and only who 49ers photographer, amongst other things, Canon Explorer of Light. Ah. <sighs> Hold on, folks. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Mr. Terrell Lloyd, my man, how you doing? <laughs> All right. Thanks, thanks, Ann. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And I know we've been trying to uh, nail down some dates to get this going, but uh, I'm happy to be here with you. And uh, hopefully it could inspire some some photographers out there and, and spread some you know knowledge and, you know, just some of my experiences. So you know, you know, the thing is, look, you, you you, you said we've been trying to nail down a date, but look, you have this SF logo right there on your shirt for the 49ers. And I know Twit is is a tech network and a lot of our listeners are not that much into sports, but they they have at least half a brain to know that, hey, the 49ers were pretty good. So therefore, you were going to be pretty busy last year with a long extended schedule, you yes. know, trying to get to the Super Bowl. So. I totally get it. And, and I got to tell you, I'm quite jealous of you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's been, it's been a long journey here, you know, and and for, you know, all the photographers that are listening, you know, I actually started off as a, a wedding photographer and portrait photographer, mm. you know, mm. before I started shooting sports. I mean, I shot sports and stuff back in high school. But then basically, you know, when I picked up a camera again and started my business, I started out shooting weddings and portraits and then corporate events. And then really fell into the sports side of it when I was shooting pictures from the stands because my seats were like 10 rows from the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, One of the former players had a restaurant here in San Mateo, California, where I live. Mm -hmm. And my son used to go in there and get some hamburger and fries. He was, my son was about three or four. And he was the one that really got me uh, on the field to shoot a game. And then that's how I got my start. Oh, my gosh. Because I got to tell you, that was part of my hopes with sports photography. I before moving out here to to Northern California here in Petaluma, you know, I'm, I'm a Carolina man. I'm sure you can tell from my southern drawl. Uh, but I, I grew up in South Carolina and I was a season ticket holder for Clemson football for a handful of years. And 
I got lucky. I was able to get some seats from a friend that had some just ridiculous views right there at about the 40 yard line, lower level. And I would shoot images from the stands and got some really, really good stuff. And it got a lot of attention. But yet at the same time, they couldn't bring me down to the field, you know, because the old NCAA. But I right. took that opportunity to help sharpen my skills and in, in hopes that maybe one day I could end up in a stadium somewhere. And I'm still keeping keeping that hope alive, if you will, because, man, I love football. I loved I played it for years in high school and played it in college and just and then I mean, being able to to take my passion with the camera and and work with it. Oh, gosh, I, I would. I would lose my mind. I'm so jealous of you, now, sir. Now, now, now open up a little bit. Maybe I, I can get you out, out here for a game and, and oh, see if we can work that oh, out. Oh, shoot, folks. Y'all heard what he said? Oh, now we got it recorded now. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah. you, you started out doing wedding photography? Yes. I mean, I was doing like, you know, little weddings and here and there. Not not a lot of wedding training. But then I joined our local um, photographers association group in the Bay Area here. Mm -hmm. and And I you know, hooked up with some of the other photographers in the group. And then they started mentoring me in weddings and then in portraits. And I would go to these meetings once a month. And so that's how I developed really my photography business. And the love for photography came back when I used to take pictures in high school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then the sports side of it. I mean, it was like, you know, the opportunity to get on the field and get with the team in such a short period of time. And it was indirectly with the team. It wasn't really direct. You mm -hmm. know, I was shooting game action, but um, I was doing a lot of the entertainment photography for them early on. And and, and it's interesting because back then, and I, what I tell photographers now, it's like, you know, even though if you can take photos or you take great photos, it, it's more to it than that. It's about personality, too, and how you treat people, how you approach people, right. you know, mannerisms. And, and when I got this part-time entertainment job, you know, I, I asked the guy, I said, you know, he said, you know, hey, my knees are getting kind of bad. You know, how would you like to take over doing what I'm doing? I'm you know, doing check presentation, mm -hmm. you know, halftime entertainment, you know, uh, cheerleaders performances, you know, so on and so forth. And yeah. I asked him, why me? Why me? I, I've only been out here a short period of time. He says, you know what, Turin, you come in, you, you have a great personality. You come with a smile, right? Mm -hmm. and I figured you would be good for the job. And he hadn't seen one picture, right? But the thing was, it was my personality that he saw first and then the uh, images secondary. Oh my goodness. Now I'm, I'm going to sort of bounce here. Mm -hmm. So wedding photography first, and now you're in sports side mm -hmm. was, was, was wedding photography just an interest of yours or was it, was it more of a, Hey, this is a booming field. And if I want to really grow in photography, I better at least start doing wedding photography. And you just sort of begrudgingly gotten in, got into it. Well, because I got to tell you, I have no desire to shoot weddings, none whatsoever, but they are quite lucrative. I know they are. But well, the thing was, it was like a friend of mine, <clears throat> excuse me, a friend mm -hmm. of mine was at work. Mm -hmm. That was a very, you know, low budget wedding in the backyard, this and that. And they wanted me to take the photos. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, OK, and picked up the camera. And I'm like, wow, this is interesting. OK. And then later on, somebody else asked me. And then that's how I got intrigued by it. Yeah. <laughs> But then again, I wanted to learn all aspects about photography. So when I was going to these meetings each month, you have maybe a wedding photographer presenting mm -hmm. or a portrait photographer presenting or somebody doing commercial or somebody doing products, you know, so all in these different fields. And then as I started growing my business while I'm working my corporate job, mm -hmm. it was like I was learning all kinds of different facets of photography. Right. So in my business. I was doing weddings, portrait, corporate events. I did some product photography. So I wanted to do as much as I can and learn as much as I can and not really, and I don't want to say just do one thing and not that it's a bad thing. You got some weddings and portrait photographers that that's all that they do at a high, high level. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to learn a lot of things and then the sports came and then I learned that as well. And then, you know, naturally now, you know, 25 seasons. <laughs> As you can see over my shoulder, uh, my 25th season last year, and they kind of celebrated me with the uh, jersey, frame jersey. And That's just beautiful. Yeah. Just beautiful. So you talk about education um, yeah. in the photography space. So you were going to these meetings. I went with went into some meetings years ago when I first started to take photography more seriously, just a right. little over a decade ago. And for me, my experience in those educational meetings with the pro photographers was pretty bad. Uh, I, I absolutely 
hated it because I wasn't treated well. You know, I was treated as a I didn't belong, if you will, that kind of thing. So I got a lot of attitude and stuff like that. And I said that the second that I got the opportunity to help people with their photography, I will never, ever be that way towards the people wanting to learn. What was it like for you, you know, going to these different sessions and meeting these other local pro- professionals that were trying to share their knowledge? I mean, that's I know that's one of the big things with the Canon Explorer of Light program is you guys spend a lot of time just pushing out education, education. When I know for a fact, because, yes, I stalk you a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know for a fact, if you're not on the field, you're at somewhere like WPPI or Shutterfest or something like that, doing demos and presentations. But but going back to the beginning, what was it like in that education side for you trying to get, gather that knowledge? Did you have a lot of pushback or friction or, or was it just me? Man, people were just wide that. open. I smile about that because it, it, it was similar to the same thing. Mm-hmm. So when you were saying that, I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting because mm-hmm. it happened to me similar, right? Because it was like, you know, some accepted you, some didn't. It was it was like a mix, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, and for me, the ones that accepted me that started mentoring me on weddings and portraits and things like that was was great, right? Yeah. As, as I branched out, it was like and started going to these conventions, it was like, it was like it was known that people didn't want to give up their secrets, right? Oh God, that 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 but, that was the word. Right. Yeah, right. secrets. Right, exactly. So then you sit in these sessions, and well, they're not giving you really the meat of it, but yet mm-hmm. there's pictures and uh, you know a wedding in in Italy and so on and so forth. Well, you know, okay, I'm I'm doing a wedding in Oakland, right? I, you know, it's <laughs> like it's like I wanted, and I'm you know I come from a tech background, so you know I wanted to know what you know what film you were using, what lens you were using, what f-stop shutter speed, what what was your lighting you know, ratios, what I wanted to know all the techie stuff, but they wouldn't share that information. Of course. And so, and so you know, people, you know, I got frustrated. And so people came back, I came back, and people said, well, Terrell, why don't you start speaking, right? And I said, well, what am I talking about? Well, talk about what you do, you know, talk about, mm. you know, how you got with the Niners and, and where you're at in photography. And then that's when, that's when I became a speaker. And I said, like you, I said, I'm going to share information. I'm, I'm, I'm confident in my ability to do what I do that, you know, I'm going to be okay, but I want people to learn. And I wasn't just going to show photo after photo after photo. Here's what I do. Or even with the 49ers, it's like, you know, people know what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you're doing it at this level, they know you got to be pretty good. Right. 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 So my thing was, it was a matter of, I'm going to talk about what I do, but then I'm going to explain how I got here. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to share my tips and techniques on my philosophy on the way I shoot. Right. And, but even on the sports side, and it was the same way. I wasn't, I wasn't accepted in the beginning. Right. Right. And it was very interesting and it could be very hurtful, but I just took in a grain of salt and, and just by my time and, you know, and, and earned the respect of uh, the other photographers that had, been, that had been out here doing it longer than I have. Uh, thinking about you getting out into the sports side of things and doing a lot of the journalistic stuff with the sports photography, it makes me think about heck, journalism and just the writers out there uh, before. I'm OK. I'm a digital content creator. I feel like I am more than just a photographer because I I write stuff. I shoot photos. I shoot videos. I host this podcast at least i attempt to host this podcast um and so there's times where i would have have gone out to events like ces or whatever to cover it as as a media person you know to get out there to write stories and it was always weird to me um just walking into that press room and no one looked like me in there right or one you know and but at the same time i am fortunate that no one really gave me crap or Mm -hmm. treated me as if I didn't belong in that press room. Mm -hmm. So for you as a sports photographer, I'm thinking it was a lot of sports photographers that didn't look like you when you went into those, those pits or over on the sideline and whatnot. Is is that how it was or am I just making it up? I mean, it was, it was, there were some, you Mm -hmm. know, um, but not many. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, when I got directly with the team, you know, and, and became, you know, um, a team photographer, you know, officially. Right. It was like um, there was no minorities 
in the league that looked like me that was officially official team photographer. So I was one of the first ones to start. Now we've made great strides, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, um, I think there's in the minority side, when you look at women photographers and, and minority photographers around the league now, um, there's about, I want to say, uh, three, three women and then, um, and then four, four or five males that are mm. African that are shooting with teams now and that wow. are leading as, as team head team photographers. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I, I, <laughs> I laugh because I can remember a couple instances in the press room years ago and someone saw my tag, my, my little what do you call it? Lanyard or whatever credentials. And they had seen my, my writing online, you know, I wrote for tech Republic and, and stuff like that. And they'd seen my writing online. And when they saw me walk by and saw that name on the tag, they stopped me and it was like, your aunt. And they all do this same gesture. They look up because a lot of the journalists and writers are little bitty guys. <laughs> And I'm six two, and probably outweighed him by a hundred pounds. But it was always just that fun interaction of okay, you're you, you definitely don't look like any of us, but you could still perform and do the job and get the work yeah. out there just like yeah. the rest of us. I, you know, I took it all in stride. You know, and and it's like you know, with my positive attitude, you know, I didn't really let it get to me a lot. Mm -hmm. of the negative stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's why I've, I've survived for such a long time. Yeah. And, but then again, I said, you know, as I become a speaker, I'm not going to, I'm not going to treat people like how I was treated coming forward. Right. I'm going to help people. I'm going to guide people. You know, I never thought, I never thought I was inspirational until someone told me that right. When, after I did a platform, right. Yeah. Yeah. We're at, we're at, we're at WPPI and, and she stopped me on the trade show floor and said, Oh, I'm, Hey, I'm sorry. I missed your presentation. You know, I heard it was really good. I'm just, I'm disappointed, you know, you know, and, and I heard you were so inspirational and, and that's when it hit me and I'm like, wow, was I inspirational? And that, and that's really when I thought about it after that. But one thing that she, that she told me, it was a um, photographer. She was from Detroit and she says, you know, I know you're a big time photographer and, and everything like this. And, you know, but I appreciate you, you know, taking the time. And I said, well, no, no, I, I mean, I just do what I do, you know, and this and that. She said, no, no, Terrell, you don't understand. She says, I met photographers that are doing platforms. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, in the business for a long time and I looked up to him and, you know, I introduced myself to him at the end of the thing, but then I see him on the trade show floor and I try to say hello and they give you a wave and they just keep going. Like they, you know, don't exist. Right. <laughs> but, but you, She said, but you, you stop and you have a conversation for five or 10 minutes. You talk, yeah. to you engage with people. And she says, you know, that's, you know, that's what's special about you. Right. Yeah. Because I give people time because, my mother always told me, treat people like how you want to be treated. Damn and right. So that, you know, you exercise that, it, it will come to your advantage. <laughs> outstanding. Outstanding. Um, I've been, like I said, I follow you online and, and I know it can be considered stalking, but it's okay. We're, we're cool. I follow you online and there's another one of your, your I guess she's under underneath you. Her name is Kimmy. Um, mm -hmm. She goes by Kim Possible on yes. uh, Instagram and Twitter. And it's so funny watching her because I can see energy between the two of you and, mm -hmm. it, and it always just sort of comes out inside of the images that you all collect for the team and stuff. And just seeing that connection there, it just made me think, all right, yeah, this is more than just, just having the camera and, and click right. a shutter. This is, this is about having some energy and making a connection with the people on the other side of the lens. You know, she talks a lot about the different players, whether they're former players or existing players on the team. But she, at one point made some type of connection in, in all of those images. It clearly is reflected in all of those images. And I'm sure that's pretty much what you're going through nowadays, where they've been through the weird COVID season a couple of years ago, where people are sort of, just sort of off and locked off to themselves and not really sure how much distance to give themselves. And I mean that literally and figuratively um, mm -hmm. with regards to being the photographer and a, and, a, and a teammate or what have you. So how has that been with transitioning from that weird season to now mm -hmm. people are getting a little bit more comfortable with the, with things opening up and the players are just being football players again. How, how's that been? 
let's start from the beginning when, when you talk about Kim. Kim has been with me for about 16 years now. She always like, she said, I always mess up the years and everything like that. But she, <laughs> she goes back with me during the uh, candlestick days. Okay. Right? And, you know, Kim was one of my assistants that would carry my gear up and down the field. Cause mm -hmm. I we call them grips and this and that. And yep. for two or three years, it was like, she was, she was learning. I had another gentleman with me as well. Uh, I had one person on my right, one person on my left, right? Mm. And But I was teaching as I was going, how I shoot, and so on and so forth, right? And then eventually, I would let her go off on the opposite side of the field to set up the camera to start shooting, mm. to make sure she had the settings right, and so on and so forth. And then, And then as I started moving up my way inside the organization and became full-time, then I made sure that she assumed my uh, team photographer's contract role. Right. Oh, okay. So, you know, it, it's like, you know, it, it was like you pay it forward for people that's with you for a long time and then you bring them along with you and you pull them up. From mm -hmm. what you can. And mm -hmm. that's what elevating right. people is what they say, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So she's like, you know, she has a yearly contract with us. So she's the contract photographer for the team. Mm -hmm. And we still have our um, uh, longtime team photographer that he's been with the team for, I think, 48 years. He goes Man. back our days and you know he's contracted but uh you know he's also his name is michael zagaris he's also the oakland a's photographer uh -huh. uh, you know i kind of came in with technology and assumed like you know the director role now and just running all the photography services for the team so just to clarify that up a little bit yeah but now let's transition into the COVID time which was a very interesting time for everybody mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because you know you know, you're, you're sitting at home, you don't know if it's going to be a season and what's going to happen. And then you, you got NFL coming out with these protocols and the numbers are going down. And so, but then you had to maintain distance and I had to get tested like the players every day. Right. Every day I was getting tested. Right. right. And so, but then again, you had to do things from a distance. Right. And, and from a safe standpoint and so on and so forth. So it was just, you know, but then you were wondering how long is it going to last? What it's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. and then, we get through, we start the COVID year with no fans, right? And, you know, that was, that was very interesting because <laughs> now it's like, you know, you can hear everything and it's like, it was, it was almost like shooting practice every Sunday. Yeah. Yet, you know, and then they would type in fan noise, but it was just a constant noise, right? Yeah. So you had to like almost like learn how to not shoot again, but you're still shooting the same way, but there was more, you had more room on the field. I tell you that. You <laughs> Right. And so, so it worked out pretty good, but then here's an interesting part. So too, where then Santa Clara set, shut down, they said, no, no outdoor sports, indoor sports and everything. So yeah, we had to yeah. move to Arizona. I remember for, that. Yeah. 32 days. <laughs> like so, that's, that was your home game in a whole right. different state. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but it was, it was a, it was a learning experience, but then, you know, you just try to stay safe and make sure, you know, less contact and, you know, you don't, catch the virus and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I tell people I was bobbing and weaving. You know, <laughs> so yeah. So you had a lot of 85 millimeter and up kind of shooting things going on, right? Oh yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I work with like, it's, it's interesting because for the photographers that don't know, and they, they were always wondering how this happens is I work with four and five cameras, mm -hmm. right? It was like, how do you do four or five cameras? You know, um, I got a, a, a 600 millimeter, a 400 millimeter has a 300 millimeter, I got hanging off my shoulder. I may have 7,200 on one side, mm -hmm. uh, 24 to 70 or 1635 on the other side. And then mm -hmm. I have a think tank modular system where I'm carrying, you know, an 85 or 1124 or a fisheye, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, because I shoot a lot of different things other than just game action, you know, from, from player arrivals to locker room, to coming out of tunnel for pregame, pregame mm -hmm. intros, sideline portraits you know me and my crew of photographers you know we split up a lot of things but yet i'm trying to capture a lot of things just for when you think about it it's like you got to think about outside of game action and what we do for the web or social or anything like that yeah it's like i got to shoot for marketing partners yep. sales uh foundation community relations uh ownership i mean there's a lot of variables that go into play on a game day yeah oh man that see i i, I love those little nuggets right there you yeah, because a lot of a lot of photographers, um, I'm not going to poo poo it, but people right. tend to focus on one particular aspect of things in, in the photography space. You got people that are I'm a portrait photographer, period. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. I'm a wedding photographer, period. That's all I do. And that's fine. Right. But I think if you can roll in the other aspects around that stuff, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, how's your marketing? 
You know, mm-hmm. how are you marketing that you're a wedding photographer? Because your wedding photographer marketing shot is not the same shot that you're going to give to the bride and groom. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting it's, when you say about marketing, right? Mm-hmm. I think I was pretty lucky for the when I started my business, right? Because I didn't really have to market a lot. Right? Oh all, man, yeah, that's lucky. All the things that I did, <laughs> right? And so, and so it was interesting because it was either the clients I had, and I they repeat clients, mm-hmm. then. Um, they were introduced me to other people and, you know, new clients and my wedding clients would tell me some, tell somebody else and I would get more weddings and no referrals. I, I stayed, I stayed busy. Now I did have a marketing material uh-huh. that, I, that I use, right? Cause you always got to have that. And you had your website mm-hmm. stuff as well. And so, but year after year I was busy. And then you got to remember, I'm still doing football mm-hmm. in between. Right. So, <laughs> you know, with that and everything else, it was like, I was constantly busy. Right. Um, even on the on the corporate side, I was doing a lot of corporate photography, and and one of my clients was they had a lot of uh, what do I want to say, uh, large Silicon Valley companies, yep. and and one of them had like BMW as their client, yeah. and they hired me to do some BMW shoots, not really to do car shoots, right? To do their high end um, events, yeah, and their high end events was like either in Australia, Italy, yeah, yeah. Argentina, you know, so, you know, now, 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 and I tell photographers too, I said, look, I said, I was doing like the grip and grins, documenting the event, the people, scenic stuff, creating these books and albums for the, for the client. Yeah. Now, these images wasn't going to win any awards at WPPI, right? right. You know? um, but yet, if you're creating memories and moments for your client, you will get paid handsomely well. Yeah. for what you do. And then got to travel to some exotic places around the world. Oh, Monte Carlo. Yes. I was in Monte Carlo where they have the Monte Carlo Grand Prix Man. and our hotel was right by where, where the where the racetrack is, oh, where they drive gosh. through the street. So it was like crazy. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Oh, I love that. I've shot three events and one was for an NBA player and it just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, just being able to have that opportunity and and it, and it all came into place because of Partly with referrals, you know, word of mouth kind of thing. But I also had a body of work far as being able to shoot something beyond the professional headshot, you know, being able to shoot like um, social media video content, whether it's like like nowadays it's reels, you know, know, being able to figure out, all right, what can move the needle in 15 seconds? You know, I had to learn and think about that kind of stuff, but I, I, I don't think photographers today are, are, are pulling that information in enough, in my opinion, you know, but Hey, if you're successful at what you're doing, Hey, have yeah. at it. But I, 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 tell, I, people, I tell people, and, and, and this phrase I used to say in my presentation, right? I says, and, and listen carefully. It's like your network is your net worth. Get it? So your network mm-hmm. is your net worth and mm-hmm. what you can make and what you do. The bigger the network you have, the more people, you know, it's your net worth as you go forward. Like one of our former uh, PR directors here with the 49ers, right? Mm-hmm. When after he left, he, you know, started venturing off into other things. And then one time he got with um, uh, IndyCar racing, right? Oh, yeah. He called me to do some races for him, nice. for, the, for the race team. Not necessarily to shoot the race, mm-hmm. but to do the behind the scenes stuff in the garages, in the pit, while the yes. guys are in communication with the headsets on, you know, yeah. he would have celebrities come out. Shaquille O'Neal came out to Texas Motor Speedway one time. <laughs> so my job was to do, do that as well. And then he says, hey, you think you could produce some prints like on site? You know, I packed up my my 8x10 printer. Yeah. And had that out there. You need some 8x10s? Boom, we print it on site, right? So I would carry <laughs> whatever I needed to get the job done. And 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 I created, and I created a certain, uh, what do I want to say, level of income. Uh-huh. And one thing I told photographers too, for well, I say this as well, when your net worth is your net worth, right? Mm-hmm. It's like when I left my corporate job, my goal was to maintain a certain level of income year in and year out. Right. Right. I didn't want any any dips where you you're up here and all of a sudden you dip real low because now you don't have anything to do. Yep. But with all the different things that I did in photography from product, events, weddings, sports, college sports, this and that, if something tapered off, I still mm-hmm. got income from other places that's right right. that's what i try to tell some photographers like well what if your wedding business got slow i mean as we're getting saturated with more wedding photographers or portrait photographers right Mm -hmm. well what if someone called you up to do you know an event at the four seasons Mm -hmm. and you're gonna say no (laughs) 
right? The Ritz Carlton. Right. That's like, right. Uh, over the mountain, over the over the mountainside on along the coast, was one of my clients for for a couple of years with their event team, and they have corporate events come in. They would call me up, "Hey, we got the perfect photographer for you, right?" So things like that. You know, it was two or three years, but once you know, once your contacts leave, and then your name kind of leaves out the door yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So, you, know, good, you know, good time though. That's the so, nature. That's the nature of the business. Nature right. of the business. This episode of Hands Off Photography is brought to you by Hover. It's time to make plans and let Hover help you achieve them, y'all. If you're a blogger creating a portfolio or building an online store or you just want to make a more memorable redirect to your LinkedIn page so you can get hired, Hover has the best domain names and email addresses for you. Email at your domain name is key to connecting with customers and building trust for your brand. They have a domain-based email for all of your needs, small or large. It's so easy to set up. You can add as many mailboxes to your domain as you need. When your domain renews, the mailbox is renewed. See, it's that simple. The prices are unbeatable. Their most popular mailbox is a no-brainer solution for business owners. Get access from anywhere. Use the email app you're already comfortable with. If apps aren't your thing, then their webmail can help you access your messages wherever you are. And that's the thing. They make everything so easy at Hover, you know, whether it's renewing a domain, whether it's walking through, trying to help you get your email set up so you can access it pretty efficiently and be able to get those customers uh, answered and, and get those gigs flowing in for you. Good stuff. Hover isn't here to upsell you on stuff you don't need. They just want to help. They have pro level tools uh, like the powerful domain and email management tools that are intuitive and easy, whether you're a web pro or just getting started. Private and security with who is privacy included with your domain purchase. Your private information remains just that private. It's a great way to reduce spam and protect yourself from unwanted solicitations. Hover Connect lets you pick the service you want to use to build and host your website. Connect helps you start using your domain name with just a couple of clicks. At Hover, you're a customer, not a source of data. Big difference, folks. Take back control of your data with reliable tracker-free email. Hover is trusted by hundreds of thousands of customers who use their domain name and email to turn their ideas into a reality. Again, so whether you're a developer or small business or a photographer trying to turn it into a small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. So go to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit for 10% off your domain extension for a full year. And we thank Hover for their support of the show. I love this stuff, but I want to get into some of the images um, from your portfolio. I have, I think it's four of them that I want to sort of work through. And they're okay. they're varying in, in different topics because there's a couple of things that just sort of made me think and I wanted to pick your brain about it. And I hope this is, this is going to be some more good knowledge sharing for our listeners, because again, that's what the Canon explorers are like do y'all y'all share knowledge for photography. So let's go ahead and pull up your images here on the screen. If I can hit the right button survey says this shot right here. Um, again, this is the epitome of, of sports photography. You know, you shot this looks like with the one DX, I believe. I want to start it. 1DX Mark II. 20 megapixel sensor, correct? Uh, what is it? 1DX Mark II. And see, now you're going to make me pull it up real quick because they yeah. changed. It. But uh, <laughs> I think it's 2024 20, megapixels. Okay. Yeah. So, so not like a huge megapixel count. And that's something that a lot of photographers in the beginning will just throw their hands up in the air about is megapixels. But yet, we're looking at this shot, and this is crispy. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that is just tack sharp. So well, here, here's the thing, and before you delve into that real quick, but like when you say that, and you just say photographers like you know megapixels here and there, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's like I've had, and if people have followed me on on Instagram, I posted during the COVID one time. It's like all of the flagship cameras I had from Canon since digital. Mm -hmm. Right, my first digital camera was a two megapixel, uh, a Canon body with a Kodak back, and it cost me twelve thousand dollars. But that camera got me on the 
got me really officially in the door with the 49ers, right? Yeah. So I've evolved with from that camera on to their flagship cameras from today, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, the quality has gotten better. Of course, it was getting better over the years. The sensors was getting better. The megapixels started growing and growing and growing. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, if, if you, even at 20 megapixels, right, if you shoot it correctly in camera, if you, even if you're not shooting raw, mm-hmm. you know, there's always debate. Hey, turtle, do you shoot raw? Or do you shoot JPEG, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I back in the day when it was like only 10 megapixels or eight megapixels, 14 meg. I mean, then I was shooting raw plus JPEG, right? right? Now the way I shoot now, it's like you know, maybe what I got, how many images I shoot a game, depending on the game, the flow, home game, 10,000, 12,000 images. I'm shooting raw. I'm gonna run out of space by the time I and then trying to convert all that, right? Yeah. I, in my class is what I say, get it right in camera. If it's garbage, if it's garbage in, it's garbage out. That's right. right. Inside the camera, do the least amount of post-production work. Mm-hmm. On the, I mean, if you have to, right? Mm-hmm. Just make sure you expose it properly. Don't blow out the whites and, you know, highlights. Make sure, you know, you're not too far underexposed, you know, to create noise and shadows and, you know, this and that. So it's kind of like, just get it right in camera. I don't care if it's like, you know, a 50 megapixel camera today. Mm-hmm. Right? And... You know, you can still take a 20 megapixel JPEG with the way the way the sensors are processing these images now and how clean they are. Mm-hmm. It's like we got we got um, images around the stadium that are like banner size and they're just JPEG images. Mm-hmm. You know? But I'll shoot raw if I have to shoot raw. Put it that way. So it all depends on what we're going to do. Well, and then JPEGs, quite honestly, are the technology behind it are getting better and better. Over exactly. the years. So it, it, it's not like they're not usable this day right. and age, especially if you're especially if you're operating the way you operate. You have to get stuff done like quickly sometimes because right. it's not just the journalistic post game report that you're dealing with. Sometimes you're dealing with the marketing that's going to go out right at halftime. Right. <laughs> stuff like that. So I totally, totally, totally get yeah. that. But but this but this yeah. shot here, uh, I'm looking at it and it looks like this is another rainy day. Um, so you're out there with 400 millimeter lens, 600 millimeter lens, and the camera body. You're talking upwards of you know fifteen thousand dollars worth of gear right out the gate in Man, the uh, rain. A little bit more than that. Is that, that yeah. Let's double that about thirty something thousand. Well, okay, so yeah, I went low. I lowballed you. So we got thirty thousand dollars worth of gear out here in the rain. What is your thought process to be able to manage that stuff and make sure that you can still take care of it, all while handling a fast-paced football game like this? Because it's you don't want your, your your gear to get destroyed and really just ruin it, ruin the, the the day for you. So what what is your thoughts on on just oh taking care of your gear during a shoot like this well you know you got to have you, you got to have good rain covers put it that way right mm-hmm. and, and shooting with rain cover, covers it could become comfortable right because now you know because you you know it's it's wet it's raining you know you don't want to get water on the front element of your lens even though you got the 400 or 600 lens mm-hmm. and it, it's you got that the big cover on the front of it but then you don't want to tilt it up which has happened before in the rain you know, lens and now you got to dry it. So you have to be careful in what you're doing, right? But you can't shoot the same way in a rain game as you do a regular game when it's not raining because now I have to shoot. I can't shoot with a lot of cameras, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I may only shoot with like three cameras during that game, a big lens, a two to 400 or 400, right? Um, 70, 200, and then maybe a wide on my side, right? Mm-hmm. They- let the action just come to you and wait for it to come to you because as as it's raining you know you're getting wet on the camera cover is getting wet and so you just try to do the best you can in those elements but then some of the images you get you just create dynamic images because you know the jersey's all muddied up yeah hiding in the mud and the rain's coming up i mean it's like i could show you i should have sent you a different series but i like i love this pose of here because look you could tell us in the elements right Uh uh-huh Jersey's wet, muddy, this and that. You know, the ground is saturated. You know, uh, this stuff flying up off the ground. You know, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, but everything you sit back and you let it come to you because now you can't move around the field as much as you can because now you're sloshing around in the grass and in in the rain as well. So you just let everything 
come to you because normally the time I shoot around, you move around the field a lot. You may shoot around like the 30 yard line and you go to the corner of the end zone and then you get back in the end zone if they're coming down to get ready to score. Mm -hmm. uh, in the rain side, you say, okay, well, I'm just going to let it rain on you, right? Keep the <laughs> and wait for whatever comes to you. Yeah. So with the rain game, I, I, I've i never shot in a rain game or anything like that, um, but I've played in the rain. Mm -hmm. So with you as a photographer, do you have just a miserable, miserable rain or snow game that you you can remember or was it just eh, that, was, that was one of those games that I watched the yeah. game right there. just absolutely I mean, miserable to you it was, oh, it was. i mean it, it was like and it was it was interesting because we had back-to-back -back games you know we played washington i think we played baltimore the week before mm -hmm. and in, in baltimore it was raining sideways right literally so i'm in end zone over here and it's raining sideways and your face gets wet but it was like freezing rain so now your face get numb then the quarter change, you go around the other end, it was raining sideways on this side, right? And then your face gets frozen on this side. So it was kind of like, it was like back to back in this a mess. Even going back to the locker room, it was like, you're like, you're not trying to fall and the mud was just, you know, still didn't drain and so on and so forth. And then your clothes are just saturated. It was like, you know, ew, oh. <laughs> it was the worst, but you know, I tell you what, I'll do it anytime, every time, because it's just, it makes for, you know, great, you know, images as you see there, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. let's, let's fast forward to our in a, uh, our NFC divisional game against Green Bay, mm -hmm. right? and it's ten degrees, uh, right? Uh, and so it's freezing out, and it's a night game, and you know, and it's cold, and it's got a little bit of snow flurries in the beginning, then it stops snowing, right? And then going at halftime, and you you know you know get warm for a little bit, you come back out. And then it's snowing. It's oh, like, oh man! Yeah. The one thing about this, and I said, well, I'm not going back up there to get a cover, right? But it wasn't. It was a dry snow, really. Okay. Right? Flurry. So basically, the snow would hit the camera, and it was just you could just blow it off, right? But right. it just it no flurry. But the one problem with snow is it's like when you're trying to focus, and sometimes it focuses on the snow. Yeah. Clear. So you get some images get a little soft here and there, and then some would catch here and there. It's like, and you're thinking, well, oh, wait a minute, what? I'm not getting into focus. So it's kind of yeah. like, yeah. And you're catching but, those big flurries coming down exactly. accidentally. Oh, dude. Good grief. But it was fun. It's, it's fun when you're winning. Man, you well, yeah, I, I believe that. You know, I, I, I tell my kids, you know, because they're athletes and they always fuss about the weather as far as going to practice in the rain and stuff like that. And for me, I, I, it's sort of weird. I never notice the weather in the middle of activities, whether right. it's really, really hot, really, really cold, or just flat out, just sideways raining. Cause I've been in all of that. Yes. But the second I'm done with that activity, like when that whistle says game is over, I'm miserable. I'm like, Oh my gosh, this rain. <laughs> and, I, and I can only imagine if I'm out there with gear in that type, in all of those elements, if, if I would feel the same way, I'm wondering would I still be able to perform and not really even notice that I'm getting just drenched. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's like early on. I mean, I had, you know, I had to learn how to shoot. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to shoot from coming from the stands, going on the field. I remember, I remember when I, my first early years on, on the field and it was like, it's like, cause as a fan, I was watching the game. Yeah. Now I'm on the field trying to take pictures. And then I was watching and not taking a photo through the lens. I'm like, Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I missed this. Yeah. 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 So, and so people say, well, how do you enjoy the game? How do you do? Well, I enjoy it through the lens. I know how to watch the game through the lens and continue to take photos and remember every play of that game going forward. Right. And so I could tell you, somebody says, Hey, did you get a shot of that Alex Smith touchdown run against, um, the New York Giants, and you know, yeah, I said, oh yeah, I remember I got one of those shots, you yeah. know, from where I was on the field, and then go to that that game that year and go back to my highlights because I know it's what, and then pull out that photo. Oh man, I love it. I've I've been shooting the local high school here since moving in, and it's been fun. Um, but at the same time, I'm a parent. My kids were playing, so it was it was a bit of a battle to be able to enjoy the game as a parent, plus also work the game as a photographer and i did like you i did catch myself a couple of times you know the the viewfinder was down here at my belly yeah and yeah because i'm just watching 
and this team whoop up on another team. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, crap, I'm I supposed to be like, shooting. Yeah, I, learned, I learned how to do it through the camera because when my son played Little League and I was out there shooting the Little League, I, I know how to concentrate and watch what he's doing if he's at bat or, you know, but then again, if, you know, if he's on first base or shortstop and so on and so forth, but you want to get the other kids too. It, it's like I just had to learn how to how to <laughs> – how to balance it, put it that way. Oh, man, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So let's yeah. switch to another shot here. Let's see if I go um, this one. And these are two in the same. Okay. So I'll start with this one here. We have this shot and we have this shot. Okay. Let's start with that shot first. All right. So this shot here. Yeah. All right. I, I'm looking at the perspective of it because this isn't necessarily eye level. Correct. You know, you're down a little bit low. Uh, I don't necessarily know the focal length right out the gate. But um, again, I'm thinking of this from two perspectives. I'm thinking of it as a photographer and I'm thinking of this as a ball player walking out of that tunnel. Me as a ball player walking out of that tunnel, there's a certain level of focus that I had to have and that I usually had. And. I'm not sure how I would have reacted with a photographer right there because you're clearly dead center in the middle of this tunnel. Correct. I don't know how I would have reacted if it would have thrown me off, if it would have pumped me up or what have you. But I definitely would have noticed you because you're right there in the middle of this frame. Now, you now I'm putting on my photographer hat. Okay. Okay. so I'm in this tunnel and I'm thinking, ooh. If I get dead center in this, it's going to have some beautiful balance. And if I get below their eyes, it's going to make them look even bigger and more grandeur and just going to give that whole just mm-hmm. warriors or, or, or battle, you know, that that whole vibe. You know, we're getting ready to go out here and battle and compete and we're going to win. It's just going to be super inspirational, even down to this looks like a wide angle lens, because yeah. look at how the walls are starting to go into a vanishing point. Uh, there in the center. So it's just so much working with this from a photography dynamic standpoint. And I'm like, oh, this fires me up. So so I I battle with this Mm -hmm. again with two different personalities, the photographer personality versus the player getting ready to compete personality. You're the photographer here. So what was it like for you? I mean, do you ever consider the players and their emotions and things like that happening in this in moments like this? So it's a, it's a level of trust too with mm-hmm. the player. Right? But the one thing is it's like, you gotta have a game plan going into what you're gonna do, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think I shot this with, with 11 to 24, either 1635, 11, 24, but I'm pretty sure this is 11, 24, right? Mm-hmm. And this is during um, our pregame warmups, right? Oh, oh so, gosh, really? Pregame so warm? <laughs> this pregame warm. They get ready to hit the field just doing pregame, right? And so the players, you know, when you look at it, the players are very focused in what they do in their position and so on and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. Now, they see where I'm at as they're walking down, right? Mm-hmm. Now, my thing is I am moving all at the same time, okay? Mm-hmm. Let me explain. So while they're coming out the door, I followed them out. I gave them distance, right? Mm-hmm. Then I shoot down low, right? And then I back up even more. So they never reach me unless I want them to reach me. If okay. That Okay. I get it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm moving. Get yeah. down again. Boom, boom, boom. I'm moving. I go to the next spot to get them running out. So I only have milliseconds to create that moment. They're not standing there posing for you. Right. They're not, you know, giving you any hand gestures or, you know, or hands on the waist, waist or arms up like this or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're in their moment, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They know that at some point I'm shooting and I'm out. I'm shooting and I'm out. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I'm able to create this type of image shooting down low. Right. But it's like it's a matter of firing off so many and then getting out of their way. Mm-hmm. Right. This because is... I don't want like so I don't want like number 11, the center person there mm-hmm. to have to walk around me. Right. right. And so on and so forth. So then I can move back and get something else in their same distance of where they're at. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. See, this is how I know you're a pro because you just described getting in there and just machine gunning it, if you will. Boom, boom, boom. Get these shots and moving. But yet, when I pull this up, this thing is really, really, again, you're sharp. Your focus is right on. And this is with the wide angle lens. Correct. You know, (laughs) it's not as easy to do with those wide angle lenses. So, right. And like, remember, I told you earlier, get it right in camera, Mm -hmm. know what your exposure is going to be, 
in that tunnel with that lighting, right? Mm -hmm. Where your ISO is going to be, because the 1124 is an F4 lens, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, the, I'm shooting at F4, maybe at a higher ISO, yeah. uh, you know, a decent amount of shutter speed to um, at least freeze their action, right? I can't shoot that at like a 30th of a second no. or 60th of a second. So you have to know your sweet spot of where you're going to be, right? And like all these cameras, the, the higher end cameras now, you know, you could shoot it at 4,000, 5,000, 6,400 ISO with minimal amount of noise. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. I just spoke about that on um, a recent episode here with, with ISO used to be problematic once she got over about 3,200. <laughs> but then, but then again, when I had those cameras, I knew where my limits were, mm -hmm. right? I knew where my sweet spots were. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, and you just play to it. Yeah. Man. And then, so to relate to that shot was this one here. All right. Okay. So this is a, a whole different perspective. It's still out in the, in, in the tunnel, but it's in color and you, you, you're back behind the players. But cool. again, this, this is looking yet like a, another wide angle lens on it. So, so, so well, the same it. type of approach with this one here. Yeah. So same type of approach. Now this one here is uh, at the Super Bowl in 2019 in Miami. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Now, now, now you're getting ready to come out for intro. Oh my uh, gosh. There's no pregame on this one and so on and so forth. Right. And so here you wanted to get a feel for the players getting ready for the biggest game of their careers, yeah. basically. Right. Yeah. And, and just that wide, you want to get that wide angle moment of everybody. Right. You know, you got, you know, you got Jimmy Garoppolo as the quarterback mm -hmm. and, and it's a matter of he's, he's the center of the team. Yes. Basically. Yes. So he's, you know, the guy. So it's kind of like, you know, you've got it. You want to feature him right there. He had his back turned. He don't have to be looking at you. You mm -hmm. know, he's getting ready to, you know, give a speech to the team. And then, you know, in some, some in other photos, mm -hmm. it was like, I also got a, a big huddle shot of those guys too. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take that uh, 11 to 24 and then I'll go up wide on top, tilt the camera over and get a super wide with that 11 millimeter perspective. Yeah. It's like a, of all the guys there. Now they do their speech and now they're turning, they're ready to come out the door, right? right. As they finish the speech, I'm out the door before they're out the door, <laughs> right? Because, because, you know, if not, they're bumping and I'm like trying to squeeze in between guys and I don't want to be in their way. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up whatever mindset that they have, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. back out getting ready to get a run out on the field. That's, that's the thing that would really, mm just scare me the most is I don't want to mess up their mindset. You know, right. this, this is this, I know how fragile those moments are to, to right. be, to get ready to compete. I totally right. get that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful image. So let's take a look at another one here. I want to take a look at this shot here. You know, we've gone from doing battle, um, pregame, the focus, the emotions to now we've gone to portraits. We've gone to a whole different side of, of photography. We've gone to a whole different side of, of, of just a, the approach, if you will. Yeah. This is a beautiful shot. Uh, uh, looks like Jarrett McKinnon. Correct. And um, you have this this rim lighting going. There's not a lot of feel like there's doesn't right. like there's any feel like going on at all, but it works perfectly. Oh, and it looks like there's a rear light um, that's not seen. It looks like it's lighting up the background. Possibly, I could be wrong, but neither here nor there. <laughs> but it's beautifully done, and it's a whole different approach. Walk me through setting up a shot like this because we're looking at you know what's the phrase gladiators, mm -hmm. you know when these guys put on their pads and helmet, and they have a whole different mindset. But now you're telling them, let's see a different side of you. What, what's yeah. what's a portrait session like for? An NFL team, you know, let alone the 49ers. Oh man, it could be it could be hectic, man. It could be fast, <laughs> this that. I mean, it's like it, it, it's it's interesting that you pick this one. Mm -hmm. And imagine this: mm -hmm. sometimes you only have five to seven minutes of that with a player, mm -hmm. right? This is this is one from our media day. Let me walk you through our media day. Okay. Right? Our media day sessions go about two or three days, right? Okay. And so. And so you amongst we shoot about 60, 70, 80 players for media day, right? Okay. So now 
we have our design team that our web team and digital team that has that needs content for to produce graphics of players and so on and so forth. So they have a need, right? Mm -hmm. Specialized need, right? Then you have the networks that has their needs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's two different people. Right? <laughs> oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> so the networks set up of what they want is basically is pretty generic off of gray. You know, guys stand left, stand right, smile, look here, look up, helmet on, helmet off, okay, get in your position, blah, blah, blah. Kind of generic. Editorial right? is what it right, is. Right, exactly. Editorial. Right? <laughs> but, but the design team needs more, you know, action driven, something in motion, mm -hmm. something dy dynamic lighting, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Okay, well, let me go back. I only have five to seven minutes for a player sometimes. Yeah. Right? So how, do, how, how will I get two different lighting setups in one setting? Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically this setup here is the second lighting setup that I had. Okay. So, so imagine this, okay? Basically, it's only four lights that I have set up for this, for this shoot. Okay. Right? I got my main light and my fill light is turned off. Okay. I have two strip boxes, edge lights that's coming off the shoulder and coming off of here. Yeah. Right. That, that will, that, so you see where his number and McKinnon in the back. Yeah. And then that's one strip box over there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The light that's lighting his face on the other side is another strip box. Mm -hmm. Right. So now if I go through all of my poses, I got to do for the networks. I turn off my main and fill and say, okay, let's create something dynamic. And the only two lights I have on are the strip boxes. Yeah. And that's how I'm able to create this. Now I'll have them turn this way. I'll do like a full shot. I'll do three quarters, you know, just, you know, but with no main or fill in front of the face and you just got the two edge lights coming in. Mm -hmm. So this is how I'm able to mix up a couple of different scenarios in a short amount of time. So, but on this photo here though, wait, why you think there's a, a light on the background, Mm -hmm. Is because I vignetted the edges to make it to draw it in. Like there is a light on the oh, back. Oh, okay. And All right. The box is there. Okay. So it's 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 like you're you're mimicking like okay. If I had light on the background a little bit here, got two edge lights here, it's three lights. No, it's two lights, but I I vignetted here and so on and so forth. Yeah, but but if you look at the light on his face right there, it's just that's just coming from the main. I mean, from the strip box itself. Yeah, you see it right there in his eye. Catch right. light. Now, now the thing is, but you have to be ready for to do that shot. Because remember, if I got four lights going, that's metered a different way. Sure is. Two shots, it's <laughs> metered another way. So in your mind, you got to say, okay, if this is at 200 ISO at an F11 and, you know, uh, 200 of a second, blah, blah, blah. If I turn off the main and fill, right, yep. then I got to go up my ISO because I got to get this. I got to be at blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I don't remember numbers right offhand, but mm -hmm. it's like, but then you got to change your camera real quick yep. to get that real quick, yep. right? You got to be quick. Now, now with that said, so you're handling the editorial side, you're handling the design side. What's going, what are the players doing when they come in there? Is it more robotic or where they walk in and say, all right, where do you need me to stand? Or do they come in with, all right, I want to show some of my attitude in these shots. Or, oh yeah, or, sometimes we do. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. they show what, what they have because I want what they have. I want I want their their emotion and their attitude and so on. And so on. then you get some players like, okay, just tell me what to do. But <laughs> but we also have a team. You know, I may have one of my other photographers in there with me shooting. Uh, we have a couple of people from our design team. We'll have what we call a storyboard yep. on the wall yep. of certain images we want to capture per position. Yep. Like, you know, the running back, we want to give him in his running back pose. If it's a wide receiver, give him his wide, you know, if we want like, you know, our linebacker, you know, we want to go like, you know, you know, yelling at the camera, bending down. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So it's kind of like it, it all depends on what the look we're trying to get from the design phase. So it's not me calling out all these shots. It's basically how design is going to use it. What do they need for their elements and to produce things? And then it's 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 truly a team effort, to be honest. I, yeah. I, I absolutely love this. This is just. Mm. But as you see, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. Right. I can tell. And, and I appreciate that because, again, all not every not one image can work everywhere. Correct. You know, so right. there's, there's certain images that just don't fit a particular um, 
right. scene, if you will, or wherever it's going to be placed, whether it's for right. marketing, whether it's going to be something for the family or things like that. You know, I, I, I totally respect that. And I love I love this this body of work and the thought process that you and your team put into this. So, yeah. Hey, this man, I'm fired up. I'm, I'm, I could keep going. But, man, we've been talking for about three hours now. No, I'm kidding. It's been three hours. It's <laughs> Oh, yeah. there's, there's always a lot more. You want to have me back and we talk about some other stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, later on next time we could talk about how, you know, I, how I look at light on a football field or light when I'm shooting college sports or, you know, and I and, and it had to do with me uh, studying under a portrait photographer back in the day. Right. You know, I, I thought she was one of the, the best portrait photographers in the Bay Area. And, you know, they taught me like direction of light and how, you know, how to how to approach, you know, looking at light, looking where it's coming from, what angles, you know, what position you're going to be. And I took that and I applied it to sports the yeah, same way. I can totally see that. Can totally see that. Especially if you're talking about having a four light set for a bunch of meathead football players to come out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. I no. kid when I say well, that. was one. One time I had six <laughs> lights set up on that. Oh, man. Six lights set up and two different cameras. Oh man, see, yeah, I need to follow you around and, and just just see how you roll. I'm sure it's just a fascinating flow and a lot of moving parts, and then you get these beautiful images right out the gate. Man, so Mr. Terrell, is there anything that you would like to share with the listeners? Something that you got coming up, or, or anything you'd like to promote? You know, just oh, that you can share because I know you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's, it's funny because I don't have too many things coming up yet. I mean, um, it, it's interesting because we, you know, we made that run uh, in an NFC Championship game. You know, I always felt we were a couple of plays away from another Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. so sure support, you know, and that, you know, got back, took a little time off, you know, regroup and you know, get your head right, you know, and and say, okay, time to start all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know um, get ready for you know draft and uh, uh, mini camps organized team activities, you know, just, you know, start that grind for the 26th season all over again. Right. <laughs> and so, but then again, now that things have, have really started opening up a lot mm -hmm. now I've gotten busy again. So for the last couple of years, I've been busy, but not the way <laughs> it is now. So now it's like, I don't, I don't have too much time for anything. <laughs> so, you know, I got, I got some projects I couldn't finish up last season. Mm -hmm. now, you know, we're doing this season. And so it, it's like, and these kind of like major in-house projects right right so it's um you know you know i want to really get back out there and and speaking again you know as well and doing you know doing a platform doing a couple hours you know uh, demos and stuff like that so hopefully that that'll pick back up once i can get caught up here and stuff like that and see what see what else Canon has in store for me later on down the line oh i i know ken is going to keep you busy you know they just put out the r3 and now there's rumors oh. of yet another beautiful body coming from them because no one has said that their R3 is a flagship model, but a lot of consumers right. are assuming that. But I don't think that's their flagship. There's, there's more coming. R3, from that. this R3 is phenomenal. <laughs> it, it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it was like I couldn't get all of them fast enough, right? <laughs> they wouldn't let me order my four and five all at one time like I normally get now. But it's it's like it 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 is you know it it's all all true from what all the specs said it was before it even hit the market, right? And I'm not, you know, saying that because I'm a can explorer light, this and that, but it's like, if you follow my record and you followed me and, and, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, with all the brands that I've had and I've seen the evolution of digital, yep. right? It's mm -hmm. like, this is like the top right now. Like I say, I don't, you know, people say, well, Terrell, do you know anything about the next one? No, I mean, even though we have a non-disclosure, they still don't disclose a lot right, of stuff. Right. Too. They're going to keep oh. tight lip. <laughs> yeah. But whatever they got coming down the pipe, if it's an R1 or whatever the rumors may be, you know, I'll wait for when that to happen. But right now I'm, I'm a hundred percent in deep with this R3. My webcam here, I'm using the R6 for the webcam, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they sent me the R5 and R6 during the pandemic time, right? Yep. And so I've, I had the luxury of, of um with my 1dx3s right it's like i incorporated the r5 into that into my mix so i can start getting used to shooting the mirrorless mm -hmm. so it worked out well for me once you know and then once you know the r3s came out it was easy for me to transition totally into total mirrorless now 
you know. But then when I was slowly getting them and I was mixing, you know, R5, <laughs> R3, and the one DX Mark III, right? It was like, oh man, I was all over the place, right? <laughs> and like, and then I like, oh, I'm ready to go all mirrorless. Finally, so, all mirrorless. It's it's the way of the world. And boy, yeah. I'm I'm glad it's here because this is some really great tech from from Canon. Good stuff, Mr. Terrell. Thank you again for for hanging out with me and and sharing all of this knowledge and information that's going to help everybody that's watching and listening to this show just get better in the yes. photography space, as well as taking, taking into the effect of, you know, understanding the business side of things and understanding how you can just grow in this and not really just be stagnant in one particular thing in your photography world, you know? So thank you again for joining me. I really do appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having me. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. All right. So folks, Hey, that is it. And I tried to tell y'all when I get these photographers on, sometime I can go a little bit long and, 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 and turn into a bit of a fan and, and I won't shut up and I'm sorry, but I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. I really do appreciate him joining me today on the show. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to shoot me a message. Just send an old fashioned email to hop at twit.tv again that's hop at twit.tv or you can give me a tag over on instagram let's let's get my instagram numbers up so just go to uh ant underscore pruitt on instagram give me a follow tag me on some of your images over there i enjoy chatting with all of you over there because some of y'all share some pretty beautiful shots and then some of y'all send me some pretty funny memes too so shout out to all of you that do that Thank you for the continued support. Thank you for sharing out the show to help grow this community. Shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week on the show. Hey, until next time, folks, safely create and dominate. And I'll catch you later. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus Membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.